Hey well, guys, um, I'm finally starting this project. As you guys know, if you follow my channel, if you don't, like and subscribe. I'll appreciate it. Comment. I'll get back to you guys. But if you follow my channel, you know that um, I suffer from the hemi tick, um, the lift of failure on the driver's side head, selling the one. Um, I have a couple of shorts already and videos explaining and showing that it actually is that. So I suspect that the cam is actually done and I have to replace everything. So I started off by um, unplugging all eight of the, well, four on this side of the coil packs and injectors. Went to the passenger side, did the same here. Then there's 10 eight millimeter bolts that hold on the intake manifold, which is plastic. Um, then you have this plug in the back. And um, yeah, this plug is in the back to this sensor. Um, I would suggest that you do this last as this sensor is extremely difficult to get on, to get to, sorry, to get to. Um, now I'm gonna work on I don't have my tripod, but I'm gonna work on removing all eight of the coil packs and removing the the coil pack and the valve cover. This one should be fairly easy as I already took this off to confirm, but this one on this side is gonna most likely give me a little trouble since I've never touched it. As you guys know, my car has 230,000 miles before failing. I don't know what this is, I'll save that. But yeah, guys, um, I'm not too sure yet. I'm leaning more towards getting rid of the these sensors here that kind of, you know, make your um, eight cylinder run into like two, I mean, eight cylinder run into four cylinder, excuse me, eight cylinder turn into four cylinder to save gas, the MDS system. I'm not, you know, as you guys know, I do tow, but I'm still on the fence about it. It's just if I do keep this system, this system is extremely expensive as I have to get certain cams and the lifters and the lifters for this system seem to be the failing point. So I'll get back to what decision I make later on. Okay guys, as you can see, I removed the two valve covers um, on the driver's side. You wanna get all your sensors unplugged so then you can kind of move this to the side. And then you have three 13 millimeter bolts holding your power steering pump. Um, you can remove these bolts. The, the pump has holes through it that you can access these bolts with a ratchet and an extension. Um, once that's out the way, realistically, then the next step would be, I have to see if I have to go under the car to remove the headers from the flange. So I'm gonna remove the head with my headers installed on it. I know there's people that end up just leaving the headers there, but um, I'm not sure if you guys know or have you experienced it. Have you heard a little ticking sound in the morning while your engine is warming up and then it kind of like disappears. That usually means that some of your header bolts are actually broken or they, they broke off. I my motor suffer from that, so I'm gonna address that when I take the heads off. Then you just have to start untorquing the heads. But before I do the untorquing of the heads, I'm gonna, like I said, go down there and remove the headers, um, the flange. So my exhaust could, I can pull the head up with everything. Um, so far, I'm about an hour in. Um, I haven't drained the fluids yet. Uh, I want to realistically remove my heads off first since you don't really need to address nothing here. I do know that I have to get a lot of this off so I can access the cam, but that's going to be later. I'm going to most likely remove the heads, check the pistons, see if like the pistons got any piston slaps and see what I can, you know, as a moment I've reached, I did a lot of research. I don't need to refresh my block as I was not having trouble, but you know, this might be what some call a band-aid, but I use my car and I actually need it to get back on the road ASAP.